final speaker of the evening is Dr. Raj Mathur, who is a consultant gynaecologist and lead for reproductive medicine at St. Mary's Hospital, Manchester, and consultant gynaecologist at Manchester Fertility. I think I'm possibly taking a more, um, in some ways, a more specific uh, uh, approach to what I'm going to say, because I have some starting points. And before these three starting points, I have another starting point, which is that there is a problem. And I'm not sure that that is universally agreed amongst the four speakers that you're, that, you're, that you're hearing today. I don't necessarily have objective data evidence for it, but I know there is a problem. You have to speak to patients, you have to go to the fertility show, you have to see nodding heads in the audience to know that there is a problem. Recognition of that problem is step one. This is not about denying innovation. It is about realizing what, things, what are things <coughs> that are actually happening in real life at the moment. Having said that, I have three starting points, and I hope you agree with me, because otherwise it's difficult to progress this debate. <laughs> the first is that clinics that provide fertility treatment have a duty, and among those duties is the duty to provide information that is accurate, complete, and impartial concerning the add-ons they provide. Those three qualities, at the least, are very important. I also submit that doctors who provide fertility treatment have a duty, and that duty goes beyond providing treatment. There is something beyond that that is the duty of the doctor. And my third, possibly more controversial point, is that patient choice is great, but it's only meaningful in the context of robust patient information, and I submit that that isn't happening at the moment, in general. Look at the clinics that provide, clinic, that provide fertility treatment. I think if you look at clinics, the way they behave, the way they advertise, that add-ons to fertility treatment are often used by clinics as markers or signals of them being an innovative clinic or a modern clinic or an excellent clinic. And I think patients will look at those add-ons as signifiers of excellence or modernity. And this will influence the choice that patients make. Let us be under no doubt information or about add-ons on clinic websites is a form of advertising. And I think that is important to appreciate. Also, when patients seek fertility treatment, they do not go there as innocent babes in the wood. They go there in a very specific context. And that context includes their own knowledge. It includes the advertisers that they've been exposed to and their perceptions of what is cutting edge or modern. Likewise, doctors practicing in a clinic also have a very specific context. What they've learned, what their experience and their recall of their experiences, very importantly. And I think something that is underestimated, the prevailing culture in a unit. The same doctor will work differently in different clinics. And hence, I think, I draw attention to a very crucial role of the clinics in the dual <coughs> add-on thing. And I think they have a dual mechanism to influence the uptake or the rate of uptake of add-ons. There is a direct influence on patient perception and behavior, and there is a direct influence on doctor's prescription and their prescribing behavior. So for me, what this leads on to is that clinics have a duty, or at least should have a duty, to advertise responsibly. And that includes putting the information in context and being accurate and complete in the information. And I think it also implies a duty on them to protect patients. And I think this duty should include recognizing the vulnerable. I know, I know it, and I don't mean to uh, 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 belittle patients, but, and I know it's not, it's not necessarily about vulnerability in, a, in an adverse sense, but vulnerability in the sense of heightened receptiveness to anything that would give you hope. I think it also implies that they should not exploit unproven treatments to make profits. And finally, that they need to provide adequate support and training to their clinical staff, or at least a culture that, uh, that encourages their clinical staff to be critically aware and challenging and questioning. And I don't know if that always happens. The question then is, how do these responsibilities get addressed? How do they get fulfilled? I mean, I'm not sure where the locus of these responsibilities should lie. Should it lie on the commercial, on the people who own the clinic? Should it lie on the person responsible? And who enforces these responsibilities and these duties? Is it the HFEA? But does the HFEA get involved with advertising? Is it the Advertising Standards Agency, uh, Advertising Standards Authority? Looking at the ASA website, they have dealt with <coughs> medical or medical related matters and one uh, if you if you were to tr if you were trying to sell a herbal supplement for fertility one of the things the ASA says is that you have to be in position of what they call robust evidence that it is efficacious 
You don't have to provide it necessarily to the ASA, but the ASA can come to you and say, well, this herb, this ginkgo, trifoliatum, lobatum, blah, blah, where is the evidence of its efficacy? And they have actually banned people advertising ginkgo, blah, blah, on the basis of lack of, <laughs> lack of efficacy or lack of evidence of efficacy. I now come to the third in the patient clinic doctor triumvirate, the third part of this tripod. If you look at the general medical counsel's duties of the doctor, the first duty of the doctor is make the care of your patient your first concern. Very important duty. But it's only helpful up to a point. Because what do you do in a situation where you have a couple who wish to have a baby? Should you do everything you possibly can? What if it affects their general well-being? What, what if the treatment that is in question is not supported by the available evidence? What does the duty of care mean here? Remember, it's a duty of care. It's not a duty of treatment. So I think, to some extent, the GMC duty of care is helpful, but it, it isn't really adequate for this particular scenario. GMC also lists among its duties, when advertising your services, you must make sure that the information you publish is factual and can be checked and does not exploit patients' vulnerability or lack of medical knowledge. This is unequivocally stated on the GMC, uh, by the, on the, in the GMC duties of a doctor document. And from this, I think it's, it is reasonable to derive the following duties on the doctor, that the doctor should be able to ask for accuracy in advertising by the clinics that they work for, that they can ensure that patients are provided accurate and complete information which is relevant to their needs. I think further, that, they should be, that there is a duty to explain to the patient when the evidence is absent or inadequate or scarce, and I think a duty to explain to the patient when your advice di diverges from the advice contained in professional guidelines uh, arising from this particular duty of, which the GMC imposes on you. A further duty of the doctor is that you must not allow any interests you have to affect the way you prescribe for, treat, refer, or commission services for patients. Now, I think this is potentially a very far-reaching duty in this context, but it may have different implications for doctors who are employees of clinics and those who have ownership or management interests in clinics. And it's a question, I don't know, does this mean, does this duty imply that it is unethical to make a profit from treatments that are unproven? It's a question. So in, in conclusion, perfect, thank you. In conclusion, it is clear to me that the major many clinics are commercial medical entities and they should have responsibilities and they need to be regulated accordingly. Also that the current GMC duties of a doctor are not completely adequate for this area. And I think perhaps the time has come for some very specific guidance for clinicians who are involved in prescribing fertility add-ons. And before you say that this is excessive, that is exactly what the GMC has done for female genital mutilation. It's what it has done for cosmetic surgery. We cannot have lower standards than we have for cosmetic surgery in fertility treatment. I mean, think about it. Would we want a society like that? And I suspect, if we look into this deeply, that there would be a role for the GMC itself, for the HFEA, and for professional bodies. Thank you. <laughs>